Good morning. This is our off-grid journey. We started the morning at 100%. Um, I was going to originally have the grid power go off at 10 a.m. when I usually start getting some good solar, but I'm really trying to make better use of the solar. So when I woke up this morning and the sun was peeking out and I saw that I was getting about five watts to seven watts of solar, I said, you know what, let's just let it roll with solar. So I changed my settings to um, 7.30. So if we go here, I don't know if it's on here because I did it on the app. Oh, there it is. There's your customized UPS. And I'm leaving it at customized UPS, right? So it's already on customized UPS and I have it set to discharge starting at 7.30 a.m. So it'll charge from 12 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. It'll just discharge from 7.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. and then it will charge again from 4 p.m. until 11.59 p.m. That's the way I have it scheduled. So basically, um, but it's customized because I don't just have the timed version. I also have it set for PV priority, which means um, I set for a certain percentage. The battery will not go lower than 90%. So if it gets to 90, um, the grid will charge because it is plugged into the grid. It'll do grid charging and it'll charge it back up to 100. So I have um, that set for PV priority 90% to 100%. But in the meantime, um, it'll charge from solar unless it goes below 90% between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. And I could do it a little bit further than 4. I think it probably would go until about 5. So I could do 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., which is about 14 hours. Is that 14? No. No, it's not. It's 10 hours. Sorry. It is early. So it's 10 hours. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. is about 10 hours. Now, I really have about four really good hours of solar here in my yard. Um, but I just wanted to see what I could get here. And this is just, again, with my two SP350s. I did not um, put the SP200s on DC1. My um, SP250s are currently on DC2. So you can see 67, around 60, 67, 68 volts coming in and 20 some watts. It's just two SP350s. And I did try to order another SP350. It's been very hard to find one, but it looks like Max Oak um, has one, Max Oak Direct. So I tried to order it. Let's see what happens with that. Hopefully that works out. But with um, 1,500 um, watts of, no, it's not 1,500. Yeah, 1,500 watts on each MPPT solar charge controller in this device. Um, I'm thinking each one can get 150 volts and um, three SP350s um, will be close because it's um, 42 volts each once you're getting full sun. So only three of those will take you up to that 150 mark. Um, and that's only like, what is that, uh, 1,050 watts, not 1,500. So the voltage really needs to be a little higher. For the batteries themselves, they're up to 60 volts. So I could uh, very well put the three um, SP600s on one of the batteries. So I can move that um, once we get a little more going here. But the SP350s just, they have to be on the main unit. 
and uh, it can use up to three to get to 150 volts. I just have, I've double checked that and see if 150 volts is the limit. When you got 3,000 watts of solar that you can have coming into this, you would think they would have moved that up from 150 volts. So I'm gonna double check that. But this is what we're getting. Um, it's a little after eight o'clock in the morning. We're getting 30 some watts of solar coming in. Um, as you can see, we are in discharging mode, so we're down to 93%. If it hits 90, it will grid charge back up to 100. But I want to make the best use of solar during the day, so that's why um, from 7.30 a.m. To, to right now 4 p.m., it is um, going to use the PV priority um, and not drop below 90%, but at the same time... Um, it's not just going to grid charge as it's discharging. It is in discharging mode for the uh, UPS. So I'll keep you posted. And this is, let's see, I did about six days of tracking and then I stopped and then I tracked yesterday. So that would be day seven. Today is day eight. This is our off-grid journey in November of 2022. And this is after the winter storm in Buffalo, New York. So I will keep you posted. All right, so guys, as you can see, it is now 8.41. We've gotten down to 90%, so grid charging turned back on because of PV priority. Um, it's just about equal to what's going out to bring it back up to 100. We still have solar coming in at 38 watts, not too many watts there still. It's pretty early. So since the solar wattage is so low, um, it did discharge to 90%. So the grid kicked in. It'll stay on until it gets back to 100%. Then the grid will kick off and stay off until we hit 90 again, if we hit 90 again, because it is um, close to 9 here. And at about 10.30 or so, we should get some really decent solar, start to get some decent solar coming in here, and it should be enough to keep it uh, above 90. So that is gonna be the goal. And I've considered dropping the PV priority to 80%. Um, I just haven't done it yet. Maybe that's for another day. So that's it for now so it's just after nine and so we're in the discharging mode and I see that the grid has turned back on and it turned on a little while ago um, just after the last uh, section of video so you see we're still getting 30 some watts from solar not too much and the grid is only pulling enough to keep this at 90 it's not going to charge it up to 100. I wasn't sure what would happen. It's during discharging time. So remember, between 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. currently, it's in discharging mode. So the grid only pulls if it's 90%. And I thought it would bring it back up to 100 and then cut the grid off, but apparently that is incorrect. Um, for PV priority here, it's just going to pull enough from the grid to keep it at 90% so it doesn't, doesn't drop below 90%, which is okay with me because, like I said, my goal is to use more solar during the day when I have an opportunity to get solar. So the solar starts at about 7 a.m., but it's only a trickle, like 7 watts or so. So I thought it started about 7.30 when we're getting at least 20-something watts, you know. And um, now we're just under 40 watts. And it'll keep going up throughout the day. And then it'll go back down to 30-something watts in the 4 o'clock hour. So I may move that bottom to 5 p.m., like I said, so that it will do this until the wattage goes back down into the single digits. So I think as long as I'm getting double digits here, I want to use whatever solar is coming in. I, I don't want to waste 
the opportunity to have solar come in and charge this. Um, it won't go below 90, which is good. And um, we're using minimal grid power. And when the solar increases throughout the day, we will get back up to 100, I'm pretty sure. So it doesn't mean about four or five will you know, be at 100, because we'll probably be at 90. <laughs> but there doesn't seem to be a way to keep it at 100 and really maximize the efficiency of solar, which is what I'm trying to do. So if I have to sacrifice that top 10% to maximize the efficiency of solar, I'm going to do that because I want to use solar and that's what it's doing right now. So for the daylight hours, when the sun is up here from around sunup to sundown, I will make sure to have it in discharging mode and PV priority at 90%. So it won't drop below 90% but it will use whatever solar is coming in and the grid will be at minimal usage, if any. Is that the greatest, uh, the sunniest part of the day, more than likely no grid power will be being used. All right, so I'll keep track of this for you. All right, and we are back. So an interesting thing is happening. So the grid power is still pulling relative to the amount of wattage that's going out. And we do have some solar coming in, not a significant amount. We're still in the 60s right now. But with all of that, it was at 90% and it's now gone down 2%. I've had at least a full 100 watts of solar come in because the app tracks it. And it shows that today we've gotten at least 100 watts of solar. So I'm confused as to how the grid is holding at relatively the same power going out. So it's pulling a little bit more than what's going out so that, you know, it's also powering the inverter itself and the BMS, etc. But somehow, even with solar coming in, we've lost 2%. And the grid is not keeping it at 90%. So it's not even increasing the grid to keep it at 90. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Now, um, what I can't seem to find in here is how to find all the settings so that you guys can see the working mode and see here custom EPS yes all right so we're here grid charge status is enabled time control stat status is also enabled let's look at our time settings so we have period one working mode is charge and that's from 0 so 12 a.m. to 7 15 a.m. Period two, we have from 7.15 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. we're supposed to be in discharging mode, which is the mode we're in right now. Period three is from 4.45 p.m. to 11.59 p.m. we're back in charging mode. So we are currently in discharge mode which still allows the grid to charge because of the SOC, 90%. So the low is 90%, the high is 100. But right now we're in the 80s. So battery SOC low, when battery is drained to this value, AC500 will automatically cut off power output. That's not what I wanted to do. Battery SLC high. When battery is charged to this value, AC500 will stop charging by grid and leave the rest capacity for PV charging for economical purpose. 
So maybe I have these wrong. I don't want it to, it says it will automatically cut off power output. I don't want it to cut off power output at all. So maybe this percentage should be 90. There is no value that I want it to cut off power output. So I'm not sure what that is supposed to be. It'll cut off power at zero. So maybe I just didn't have these settings right. So now let's see what it's doing. So now the grid has stopped. Even though it's not at 90. So I still, I put it at 90% where the grid will stop charging and let PV take over. And it's 88% and it's still stopped charging from the grid and now PV is taking over. It's holding at 88% right now, but the question was, why did it go down from 90? I thought the low was the amount, but I have now marked the high for 90. So the high being 90 again means that that is when grid will stop charging and it allow it will still allow PV charging. But it was charging grid and PV and still went down 2%. So let's see what happens now. It's just about let me take my watch. 10:37 a.m. We should be picking up some better solar in the next 30 minutes or so, within this 30 minutes. So we're at 70 watts now. We're gonna let it go up a little bit more and we'll check back in. And we're back. It is about 11.56, uh, just before noon. We're finally getting some decent wattage. We're still only at about 100, but right now we're close to what's being discharged as well. Um, the grid did turn off when I changed that bottom number for the PV priority. I still don't really understand how that goes because it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Um, the working mode is the custom. Um, that's the mode we're in. Um, the SOC, like I said, it says for the low, um, that's when battery is drained to that value. AC500 will automatically um, cut off power outage so i don't really want it to cut off the power outage but at the same time it did not cut on grid charging the top is when the grid charging cuts off and just allows pv charging um in discharging mode remember that's only when it's in discharging mode so um i changed it i had changed it to zero in the last video um but i noticed that we're now down to like we are down to 84%. So I was like, well, it looks like it's just gonna go all the way down to zero before the grid will even kick in. And I didn't want it to go down that far. So I moved it back to 80 uh, for that bottom number, thinking that um, it won't cut off discharging, but it will um, cut on grid charging if we go below 80% or go down to 80%. So that's what I'm thinking. So we'll see how that goes. And earlier, remember, I had it at 90 and <clears throat> what it did was the grid charging kept it at 90 and then it went like down to 89 and then down to 88 which I was totally confused especially since we also had solar coming in so we had grid charging almost equal to the discharging and we still had solar coming in besides that and it wouldn't even keep it at 90 percent so I couldn't understand that so a couple of questions I would have for Blue Eddie is, is things like that. Like how did it go from 90% to 88% with um, solar coming in? Um, and it had showed on the app that at least 100 watts of solar had come in today total while the grid was still charging um, equal to discharge and 
it was still dropping from 90% to 88%. So now we're at 84. Um, our solar is picking up a little bit. I just want to make sure it doesn't go below 80 just to make sure that um, in the event of a power outage, we'll still have enough power. It just doesn't make sense to go all the way down to zero. Like I said, I will take the time to see if we can last overnight, but I'm going to wait for my second B300S before I um, test that out. I just like to make sure that we have at least enough to make it through the night. Haven't had a power outage that lasted longer than one night so far, and I'm not sure if we will. But the point is to be prepared. So that is what we're looking to do. That is the whole point of this whole process. And and that is what we're going through right now. But the ultimate goal, of course, is living off-grid. Is living off of just solar energy. And eliminating the need for even the natural gas coming into the house. Um, if we had an electric water heater... Um, which we could, you know, rewire things and have electric water heat. Um, but as it stands, it's not that way. I did want to build a cabin and organize it that way. Um, I know how to make an off-grid sink, you know, and I'm pretty sure I can make an off-grid shower. The same way we make the off-grid sink, we just change it from a sink to a shower and it would work. Um, those are goals in my life. I haven't gotten to all of that just yet. So right now we're just trying to take our bedrooms, you know, the kitchen and things like that off grid and really live off this solar. So we've got two SP350s outside. Um, as you can see, we're starting to pick up some real voltage from solar, which is great. We're down to 83% and between now and three o'clock this afternoon, we should get back up to 100%. I will keep you posted. Thank you for following our off-grid journey. All right, so it is now, what time is it? 12.30. We hooked up the three SP200s along with the two SP350s. We're just getting just shy of 250 watts. That's not a lot. That is totally not a lot to have 1,300 watts worth of panels out there. But it is a cloudy day. Um, there's not a whole lot of direct sun going on, so I think that's pretty decent. It is above the amount going out slightly. So, so far we haven't been able to go up. We were at 83%, I believe, or... 84 maybe and we're down to 82 again i have that lower number set to 80 percent for our pv priority so we'll see if the grid kicks on i'm hoping not i'm trying to just use solar <clears throat> at this time so we have pv uh dc1 and dc2 charging dc1 is our three uh, SP200s, so we're getting uh, 120, 130, 150 watts from that. And that's 600 watts worth of panels. They're not all sitting in the same place, though. They're sitting in an arc. Um, and then we have two something coming from our two SP350s. You see the voltage changes a little, that sort of thing, so... Oh, we got up to 340 something. So if we go back to the main page, we should be above five. Oh, look at that. There we go, 600 and some watts. Now that's better. We should definitely be able to go up some percentages if we're able to get, it's not staying consistent at 600 and something, but the fact is we got up there. So there's that possibility to get over 600 watts of solar between now and three p.m. we should be able to get enough solar to get up to a hundred percent that's our goal is to get all the way back up to a hundred percent and go from there and then again um we'll see if our other b300s comes in so that we can dis discharge through the night and we will just charge 
in the morning, try to do solar only. And um, that's our goal, right? That's what we're working on. So this is our off-grid journey. We now have 1,300 watts of panels hooked up. That's three SP200s and two SP350s. And I was able to order another SP350, so soon, hopefully, we'll have three of those. So we'll have three and three. So we're trying to expand our solar array. We do use portable panels. The Blue Eddy portable panels, I just like using the same system, so we're using Blue Eddy since we have Blue Eddy. And um, eventually, we'll probably get some rigid panels, but for now, we're gonna stick with Blue Eddy products and see if we can get this system to the capacity that we need. So today we got our second B300S, I'm about to hook it up. But at the moment, strange things are happening where we're not getting any PV. It's three, three something, let me see. Sorry, it's 403. We're only getting 11.1 .1 volts off of the three SP200s and nothing off of our SP350s. They are sitting out in the snow. I'm gonna have to check the cords and everything, but we were getting voltage earlier. We were getting wattage earlier. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll have to go out and check. But besides that, it is maintaining 80%. The AC is on. It did turn the AC off at some point. Not sure why, but I did catch it and turned it back on. It could have been while we were putting the other battery under he underneath here. So gonna add it on. Fine. Oh. So I put on the second battery. I thought it would show up as battery one. But it showed up as battery three. That's really interesting. Um, but this battery is showing 68% and it's online. Battery two is at 81% and it's online. Total 74%. So you see the grid started pulling 1600 watts as opposed to just pulling what's going out because it's below 80% and it's before 4.45 in the evening. Still getting no PV. I'm not sure why that is. It's not gonna take long for this to get from 74 to 80. Um, or even 100 if it was going to charge up all the way, but now that we have two batteries hooked on, we can go up to 5,000 watt watts on the inverter because you're limited to 4,500 watts with just one battery. I totally forgot about that. Um, um, you have everything now, but I still don't understand what's going on with my PV. Only getting 11.1 .1 volts and no watts. Um, everything looked like it was still sitting as we put it out there. So I really need to go check the cords. Hopefully nothing went wrong with those. Um, from up here, everything is still the way it was. Um, so you see it, it stopped pulling so much. I heard the compressor come on on this fridge, but it's adjusted and now it's still pulling 6,800 watts. So let's go check out that PV and find out what's going on with that. Again, I'm not sure why it showed up as battery two and three. I didn't go check. Um, I didn't look at the manual and see how to get that second battery. I know the first battery is supposed to go in the bottom plug for the top unit and it goes in the top plug of the battery. And I thought the second battery goes in the top plug on the main unit and the top plug on the battery, but mm -hmm. I guess I need to take a look and make sure that that is correct, but it is functioning, it is online, it is charging, so no issues there. It's just showing up as batteries two and three. So, and these cords, very difficult to put in. Like putting it in the head unit was no problem, but putting it in the battery, it's like 
there was so much resistance. So, but tonight we can test out and see if we can make it <clears throat> through the night. Now that we have our two B300S battery modules. Really excited about that. I'm pretty sure that 6,144 watt hours should definitely be enough for us to make it through the night running our home. We're not running the entire home, but the majority of it or whatever we would need if there was an outage. This is what we would need. So we should be able to run all the necessary elements of our home, which stay plugged into this and um, using UPS anyways. Um, so we will be testing that out. This is just what, day two? Day two of our off-grid journey with the AC 500. Yeah, we had, um, I think six days of our off-grid journey using the AC 200P only. Well, along with the EB3A and the EB70, but with the AC 500, this is just day two of our journey with it. So I'll be posting day one and then um, I'll see you tomorrow for this one, but um, I'll check in after I check the PV cords. All right, so did not discover anything going on with the PV input. Um, I did leave the panels out uh, all night, at least the two SP350s. I put out the SP200s this morning. I'm gonna check for rain, but as long as there's no rain, they should be fine to sit out there until the morning. Um, this is now charged up to 100%, and I did promise that when we got the second B300S that we would see if this will last all night. So it's not gonna be quite 20 hours um, till our good hour of 10 o'clock in the morning, um, but it's not too bad if we start now at six. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the grid or turn off, uh, you, I can't turn off UPS, so I'm just gonna disconnect the grid and then we're going to leave that 100% and see if we have enough power to last until tomorrow morning. So here it goes. And now the grid is off. I did try to use like PV priority and things like that. Um, I would like to leave it plugged in and I may still do like a PV priority at 0%. So if it goes all the way down to zero or maybe we'll put it at what, like five, maybe 5%. So I, I'm probably gonna plug it back in and do that. Let me set it first just to make sure. Let me go to working mode, take it off of standard. We're gonna do PV priority. We're gonna do yes. And we're gonna take this down to, what did I say, 5%? 5%. So in PV priority mode, AC500 will reserve a portion of battery capacity as you said above for PV charging only for maximal utilization of solar resources. The rest capacity will be charged by grid and or PV wherever available. It is recommended to use this mode in these areas where grid power supply is stable. So our grid power supply is stable. You know, I'm a little uncomfortable with 5%. That is extremely low. I'm gonna go with 10. 10%. Now 10% of 6144 is like 600. 5% is like 300. So it would have been 307.2 watt hours. So yeah, 5% wasn't really bad. But let's go with 10. So now that is all set. We are now in PV priority. So let me go back and let me plug that back in and see if that is what we were trying to accomplish. I know, can't even decide with D, right? So now, yes, the grid is still plugged in. There's that click. 
and it's not doing anything unless we get all the way down to 10%. I really don't think we're going to. You see, we're pulling about 300 and some watts now. Um, it would take a little less than 20 hours to use all of that. And we have a little, let's see if it's the six o'clock hour now, we have six hours until midnight and then 10 hours. So about 16 hours between now and some really good sunlight. Uh, PV is hooked up, so it should allow for PV input as soon as the sun comes up. We start to get a trickle about 7, 15 a.m. when the sun comes up. Um, it'll trickle until about 10 or so where we'll start to get into the hundreds and it'll go until about 3, 3 p.m. You saw at 3.30 p.m. today, it was at zero watts, but it was still showing that it was hooked up. We still had a little bit of voltage, not much. So it's really from like, I always say from like 10 to 2 or 10.30 to 2.30 is really the best part of the day. It's about four hours. But we'll see if we get back up to 100 tomorrow. I wasn't here at that time today. So I will try to be here in between um, in between 12 and 2, which is like the highest, where we get the highest wattage and see if we get all the way back up to 100. We'll see if we can run this to 24 hours. So we will check in. We will check in a couple times tomorrow, but we will definitely check in around the six o'clock time tomorrow and see what our percentage is at that time. Um, without the grid having to kick in. Now, if the grid does kick in, we'll try to uh, do a video about it and let you know, and we'll keep you posted. This is our off-grid journey with AC 500 Day 2. Thank you. Just an update here. We are off-grid for tonight now that we have two B300Ss. It is... Let's see. 7.48 p.m. and it took from about 6.05 p.m. to 7.48 p.m. so basically about an hour and 40 some minutes just about an hour and one and three quarter hours um, to go down 10 percent so at that rate um, it's just shy of two hours um, to go down 10 percent and um, if we stay at this rate, um, we'll be down to 80% at about 9.30, right? Because if we take the, yep, to a half hour, that'll be 8.30 and then 9.30. And then we'll be down to 70% at about 11.15. Um, we will be down to 60% at 1 a.m., we would be down to 50% at 2.45. Um, we'll be down to 40% at 4.30. Um, down to 30% at 6.15. Um, and down to 20% at eight o'clock a.m. So we will be down to 10% at about 9.45 a.m. So we would almost make it to 10 a.m. without having to use any grid power, according to these calculations, if it stays exactly as it is, we're using the same amount of power. Now that likelihood is very slim. We're probably gonna use less power during the night. I mean, unless we decide to wash some clothes or something. Um, our washer is um, on this line, our Wonder Washer. Our dryer isn't. Um, we do have a Morris Zero dryer, but it is currently not functioning properly, which I need to take a video of that. Um, but this is just an update. We made it to 90%. Like I said, it's about a quarter to 8 p.m. This is day two with AC500 on our off-grid journey and um, we will keep track of this throughout the night and check in a couple times and then see where we are in the morning. All right, just checking in. 
the time is 10 22 p.m and we are at 79 percent i just missed 80 percent but i believe i said we would be about 80 percent at 10 was it 10 15 because it was 7 45 basically 45 minutes from that is 8 30 and an hour from that is 9 30 so i was thinking we'd be at 80 percent at 9 30 but we actually are just getting to 80 percent and it's almost 10 30. so that's an extra hour we have so we're looking really really good for making it all the way to the morning we're trying to make it another 12 hours from now so from 79 percent down to 10 we're trying to only use the next 69 percent we want to have 10 percent left by 10 30 in the morning which is when our solar should kick in enough for us to not use grid power at all and if that is the case then that means we have enough with two b300 s's just two b300 s's is enough to power our main the main parts of our home um overnight now i know on the literature it says that one b300s is for one day and each b300s is a day of power for your essential devices um but this isn't really our essentials this is our two refrigerators our freezer um this is the whatever's in the living room the the den light the living room light isn't even on this um my bedroom light um some devices like some um chargers um some lights in the other two bedrooms there and the uh wonder washer which we haven't used since the sun went down so and we're going to try to reorganize our schedule to use the most um energy heavy items during the daytime during our four hour window where we get decent sun and decent solar. And we also need to increase our solar array so that we're getting more power coming in. So we do have one SP350 on the way. So then we'll have three SP350s and we'll have three SP200s. Um, and we can also um, get some more SP200s because that's only 60 volts worth and it's only 600 watts worth and we have up to 1500 watts or 150 volts so we really could get those are about 20 volts each so we could get seven of them we could have seven total on that one line it's just a matter of spacing that would take up a lot of space so it's probably going to be more reasonable for us to get some larger panels um, we'll probably end up getting some PV panels and those SP panels will be hooked up to one or both of the batteries instead since the batteries can take uh, 500 watts and I have to double check and see if the batteries are able to take 150 volts as, re as well but I'm pretty sure they do um, but they are limited to 500 watts so I have to look and see what their voltage is if it's 60 volts then we can still do those three sp 200 panels which is 600 watts going into uh, one of the batteries and then we can get some other panels to go into everything else i really do like portable panels they are more expensive but they are more convenient um, they can stay out sometimes but you also can fold them up and pack them away and i just like collapsible things i like things that pack away well so anyways this is what we've got we're doing well and we will keep you posted